I've been looking at these RGB LED matrix video wall panels and the various means by which to drive them and I've wired this one up here to be driven by a lowly Arduino uh, at mega 32.8 running at 16 megahertz um, which thanks to the Adafruit RGB, RGB matrix library just manages to drive this 32 by 32 uh, pixel display and pretty much using all the resources of the Arduino there's not much left over to do much else uh, it's recommended that you use something a bit more powerful like say uh, Adafruit Feather M0, M4, um, Teensy, uh, Raspberry Pi these displays were originally meant to be driven by say FPGAs or dedicated hardware ASICs now, among the microcontrollers I've seen people using to drive such displays such as these is this one and it's a uh, ESP8266 now you can see the problem with trying to use something like this it doesn't seem to have enough GPIO pins now the Adafruit library in order to drive this has come up with this particular way of connecting it now, now there are six data channels so that's using pins 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 there are control lines, latch clock and output enable to control which row is being displayed there's the the analog pins are being used as outputs A0, A1, A2 and A3 because this is actually a 16 scan display um, one sixteenth of the rows are displayed at any given moment and it's up to the microcontroller to do the row scanning so that occupies almost all of the pins just three pins left over here and um, two of the analog pins which um, happen to be the I squared C pins they double up as the I squared C pins in the um, at mega Arduino now those people I've seen using the ESP8266 to drive matrix of this type all seem to be using a similar trick it's quite clever really this matrix uh, typically has six input color channels uh, there's a R1, G1 and B1 referring to red, green and blue 1 and then similarly red, green and blue 2 and these are because this display has a number of shift registers the shift registers are grouped into six different chains and hence you have six different outputs now these video wall displays were meant to be used uh, in tiles that are chained together hence they have this output port and this cable can be used to chain adjacent tiles together and what people have been um, using them for instead they've either used DuPont cables or printed uh, their own circuit boards to do this they've this back to the input but not using the parallel cable they've um, shifted the sequence and hence linked up those six independent shift register chains into one long chain and effectively reducing the number of data inputs to just one and that's quite a clever way by which they can save uh, GPIO pins being used uh, one of the trade-offs of using this chaining technique this essentially makes it the data input sequential whereas the Arduino is is able to shift six bits in parallel per clock cycle the ESP8266 can only shift in one bit at a time per clock cycle but luckily the ESP can run well either five or ten times faster than the at mega 328 uh, 16 megahertz
compared to 80. Um, some of these can be set to 160 megahertz. So that makes them more or less evenly matched when shifting in uh, data to drive these displays. Most projects that use this microcontroller to drive displays of this type uh, via this chaining trick of the um, color channels, uh, they tend to all use the same uh, library called PX Matrix. Now this recommends a uh, way of hooking up the remaining GPIO pins in order to drive the control signals. And crucially, it uses up the D1 and D2 pins. Those are for I squared C. Now this particular microcontroller is um, I think it's a clone of the Wemos D1 Mini and that was intended to be used with a number of shields. Well many of them uh, rely on having the D1 and D2 pins used for I squared C and those that don't they may use like the D4 pin for like the one wire protocol. And so if you want to use PX matrix to drive um, these video wall panels, uh, it seems that you are not able to use any of these WeMOS shields. There's a guy with a Swiss accent who can tell us more about these uh, WeMOS shields and the pins that they need to use on the ESP8266. Incidentally, uh, the Adafruit library, RGB matrix, they chose the, the pins to drive the matrix in such a way to leave uh, A5 and A4 free on the Arduino, at least the Atmega based Arduinos. Those are the I squared C pins. Uh, but it's a pity that there's not much le resources left over to do anything interesting with those pins. Um, maybe you can create like a temperature display or something like that. It would be nice if I could uh, free up the I squared C pins on the 8266. Let's see what we can do here. I was to decide which of the rows on the matrix are actually being displayed at any given moment. Um, there are, four, well, at least for the, my matrix display, uh, there are four uh, control lines which are connected to on this Arduino A0 to A3. And it's essentially just counting through um, a binary bit sequence from 0 to 15 in binary. So that, I think, can be replaced by just a simple counter. So this is uh, 7493. That can be configured as a divide by 8 or divide by 16 clock divider. Uh, the clock being this 555. Some displays, however, they need um, uh, five of these control lines because they divide up the rows into 32 groups. Um, others you can get away with just eight in which case um, uh, this, this counter is more than enough. Um, there are other counters that you could possibly use for, the, for this purpose. So here I've wired in the counter just as a test and you can see and it's completely unsynchronized with what the Arduino is doing. So the Arduino is just piping in the data as it normally would. However, instead of the Arduino being in control of which row is being displayed, it's now down to this independently clocking counter. Uh, so as a result, it's scanning at a much slower rate and you can now see the individual lines being shown separately. So, in principle, this should work. So here's the circuit I've come up with. And what I noticed was that the latch and the output enable tend to be sent high at around the same time. So I'm having them share the same pin. 
Now, clock and data are as normal, just like what the PX matrix library uh, recommends. However, um, inputs to the matrix A, B, C, and D now coming from the 7493. The resistors and transistors, they're just basically inverting the output from D0 because the 7493, it increments the counter on a falling edge. So I want to have the counter increment when the latch and output enable go high at the same time. So that's what that uh, transistor and resistor is for. And the R1 and R2 on the 7493, the inputs, those are the resets. Both have to be high in order to reset the counter. And so the D7 pin on the ESP8286 is being used as a vertical sink. If it goes high at the same time as D0 is high, then it resets the counter to zero. Um, the reason you'd want to do this is because maybe on power up there may be noise on the line and then you don't know in what state the counter will be in. You'll have um, vertical syncing issues on the display. So this will just ensure that everything is always um, in sync with what the microcontroller is trying to display. So here it is wired up and I have just a simple test pattern running just to as a proof of concept to show that this is working. Thus far, I can only shift in binary data into the matrix in order to tell each of the um, red, green, and blue LEDs to turn on or off. So I can only reproduce one of eight colors. And so how does the um, Arduino library um, produce more than that? They, they can actually do 4096 and that's where bit planes come in so in this little animated example here it, the bit planes is, is essentially an image with the where the um, pixels red green and blue are, are either on or off and each sub subsequent bit plane is displayed to the to your eyes uh, for twice as long as a previous bit plane and combining them together, thanks to your persistence of vision, you perceive this as a graduated color. And with these three bit planes, you can produce um, from a palette of 512 different colors. The way I've wired up the 7493 counter clock divider chip, uh, you have to latch in the data and advance the row because they're all sharing the same uh, control pin to do that. Now I had a look at the Adafruit RGB matrix library and it, it doesn't do that. Um, in fact, there's this comment in there that actually says that they deliberately um, latch in all the bit planes for one row before moving on to the next one in order to prevent a ghosting artifact. Um, there's more on this if you follow the link that's embedded in the comment. Uh, and and they reportedly that this is what happens with these types of uh, matrix displays. So I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board here and figure out how do I arrange for uh, displaying the bit planes one after the other without advancing to the next row. So if instead the D7 output is used to decide when to advance the row counter. That still leaves how to implement vertical sync. Now I tried a few different things. Um, of course I could use a fourth GPIO pin, but eventually stumble upon the way to avoid that by using a 74123 retrigger bubble uh, retriggerable um, monostable. Now here's 74123. This is a retriggerable monostable. So here's how it works. 
as you can see the red LED uh, sends a pulse but only after the green LED has turned off the control pulse output from the 74123 you'll notice it is also triggered by when the D0 falls and D7 is kept high now thanks to propagation delay uh, across the, the NAND gate as well as across the 74123 that pulse even though that pulse goes high by that by the time it reaches the 7493 reset input um, the other reset has gone low already because it was the D0 going low that triggered the pulse in the first place so that's what stops the reset counter uh, the reset of the counter so you don't get these spurious vertical sinks happening when you don't want them to and so here it is all wired up um, so we're still using just the three GPIO pins and this is the 7493 feeding the A, B, C, D inputs to the matrix and further along there's the 74123 over here and for the NAND gates um, using a NAND gate off of a 7400 chip and here it is with a test pattern it's probably not the best test pattern to be using I just wanted to see if the uh, bit planes were working to produce a selection of colors you're probably going to see a lot of flickering uh, it's not as objectionable, objectionable in person this flickering I can I can just about perceive it the flickering will probably can probably be, be improved with some more programming effort okay so in order to illustrate why we need the vertical syncing I've disabled it in the programming for this display so as you can see the display is all messed up now because the rows are all in the wrong place with the vertical syncing now re-enabled let's try messing with the 4-bit counter so we don't have that problem anymore where the rows end up in the wrong place because the microcontroller can now resynchronize the counter so where next for this project well I want to see if I can modify the PX matrix library to use the reduced pin count the reduced GPIO pins freeing up the uh, other GPIO pins to use those Weimar shields and that way if I have a, a sensor shield like say an accelerometer I can have it um, drive an animation that reacts to movements of, of the accelerometer sensing um, the device being shaken and things like that so you can have like particle animations or so on or, or even just a simple temperature and humidity sensor you could graph out the temperature and the humidity you'll have an animated temperature um, icon or emoji and so on a weather display that actually incorporates sensor data uh, now this is a bit of a rat's nest of wires just shaking this causes glitches to appear because the wires I think are almost touching each other I would like to transfer that to some perf board and I actually have Brian Locke's um, original matrix PCB meant for a D1 Mini to be soldered directly onto it um, but I'm thinking to put that as an interposer board with that circuitry on it uh, so it will effectively be translating what the D1 Mini is doing into the signals that we that were originally going to drive the, the matrix display so if you have any 
um, advice as to how to modify the PX matrix library that would be much appreciated um, just learning about how to program the ASP8266 so I don't know about how to use all those timers it would be great to have the timer so I can thread the I squared C sensors and so on uh, it's glitching it's glitching Ooh. and once I have that transferred to here to solve that glitching problem uh, we'll see maybe put this up as a project somewhere uh, so that other people can either contribute uh, or offer me advice